the December 18th, 2017, uh, have the school committee meeting to order. Welcome everyone, happy holidays, and uh, glad to see you so soon. We did feel like we just met a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Now I have a voice, so that's always that's good. That's nice, sir. All right, um, is there a motion to call the meeting to order, or do we need to take a roll call? You don't need to actually, uh, I don't think that's you need to do either. Okay, no? So we're we're, we're <coughs> called to order. Are there any adjustments to the agenda tonight? No. Okay, great. Uh, presentations and discussion items. Okay, um, I the first thing I have for you in your packet are the positive behavioral intervention and support data. In your school committee packet, I provided you with an overview of what PBIS is. This is on your schedule of data presentations for the school committee. What I'd like to call your attention to, so PBIS is something that we <coughs> make an investment in. The monetary investment is not terribly significant. The contracted services associated with getting assistance from the University of Massachusetts Amherst run us about $2,000 for the entire year. <coughs> um, and then we have some technical support. And uh, so what are we getting in return for our investment in positive behavioral interventions and supports? One thing that we've noticed, we have been collecting data for three years. You don't see 15, 16 data on here because in the first year, data collection was uneven. People hadn't, hadn't, uh, didn't have a shared definition <coughs> of what some behaviors were. Some things were being reported, some things weren't. So the data is far more reliable over the last two years. And what you see now, although this is only to date in our current school year, is that the percentage of students with one office disciplinary referral with, with one or, or none has gone from 84% last year to 94% this year. So what that means is that what we call tier one are universal interventions identifying positive behaviors, giving positive reinforcement, explicitly teaching children expectations, appears to be having a positive impact. In addition to that overall, I provided you with data that the tech support that we get shows us by month the number of disciplinary referrals. These aren't number of students, they're number of referrals. Uh, it shows us by time of day, it shows <coughs> us by location, it shows us um, by student. So I just gave you a snapshot. As you can see, when you compare 16, 17 to 17, 18, uh, across the board, we've seen a decrease in the number of disciplinary referrals. So those are things that are office disciplinary referrals. And also, of these 135 incidents to date, um, about uh, 96 of those disciplinary referrals come from 12 students. Now the reason that I point that out is that tells you that the majority, so the good news is when we get that kind of data, we, we ask ourselves how can we help those students be more successful, what are their needs, and it also tells you that of all the disciplinary referrals, about 71% of them are, are attributed to a very small number of students. So we have data that we need to help those students succeed, and overall we're seeing an improvement in school culture and climate and discipline at HES. And we intend to continue with PBIS next year. Okay. The next, and you can stop me at any point if you have questions about any of the data. Next, what you see is something that this came from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. During MCAS administration last spring, all fifth graders in the Commonwealth were given a school climate survey. What I did was take the responses and then rank order the responses. So this, these were only our fifth grade students. It was a survey that was constructed and a copy of the survey is behind the rank ordering of responses. It was constructed by the department and all the data was collected and then sent back to us from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I did ask them why. So as the index score, an index score of 63 to 99 indicates a very strong climate. Ours was 60. So I, I did ask why is our Hadley Elementary School 59 and Hadley Public School 60 if we only have one elementary school? And they said because out of district data are attributed back. That would be the discrepancy of that one point. 
but we're, we're overall we're, we still have a very a positive climate is what the fifth graders who filled out the survey reported <coughs> with some areas for improvement is what that means and when I looked at the rank ordering what was clear to me um, most of our our responses were very high 100% of fifth graders indicated my teachers care about me as a person <coughs> You see other responses are very high. <coughs> teachers at the school accept me for who I am, 98%. Teachers help me succeed with my school work and I need help, 98%. Um, so one, thank you very much to our staff at Hadley Elementary School. These are wonderful results. And we can see that only 56% <coughs> of students indicated sure, that they have a voice in deciding school rules. So the good news is that responsive classroom, something that we started this year, that's a big part of responsive classroom, is constructing rules together. So we hope to see some improvement there, and it's my understanding that the state is looking to expand these data. So, and the other one that was very low, we want that to be low. Um, anybody having any sort of physical, um, having been shoved or punched by a, another student more than once in a school or on the playground, we did have 26% um, reporting that that had happened more than once. So that could be shoving or any kind of physical type of uh, perceived physical aggression on the playground. So it is low, we'd want that to be all the way down to zero. We wouldn't want that happening with anyone. So those would be our areas for improvement. No problem. And we can go to tab and put training <coughs> active bystanders unless anybody had any questions about the survey data. How often is that? So it was the first time the department yeah. did that and they intend on expanding it to other grades. So this is something, again, we don't even get the survey, it's just part of the MCAS. Oh, so see. that's another, it's, it's pretty amazing that it's that high. The students did it at the end of MCAS. <laughs> I, mean, I, I believe our teachers, their, their characterization of our teachers, but I also would have understood if a fifth grader said, are you kidding me? Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> been, been a little tired when asked to fill out that survey. I have one question. Sure. Um, it's interesting that one of the lowest rating questions is it about the students have a voice in the mm -hmm. side of school rules. Mm -hmm. And if you said this while I was at, I yeah. apologize to ask this, but in fifth grade, I think that the perception may be that they have less of a voice than, say, if you ask somebody in Hopkins, because I know we've heard Brian talk to us about mm -hmm. student input on the handbook and, like, mm -hmm. shifting some of the thinking to, um, you know, less about what you can't do and more about mm -hmm. what you can do and enabling others to really reinforce mm -hmm. those rules among their peers. And I just wonder, at the fifth grade level, how much they see that present in the elementary school versus in Hopkins. So I did say the nice thing about responsive classroom which we introduced this year is it focuses a great deal <coughs> on, mm -hmm. on the creation of norms and expectations that are jointly created with the adults and with the students in every classroom. So we hope to see okay. a higher percentage of students indicating that they have an active voice in creating those rules. Do you think they associate that with rules? Like I, I think of rules <coughs> like the handbook. Uh, so that's a good point. That's good you know, point. as opposed to kind of classroom hmm. privileges or... Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but that, that was my only just observation. Yeah. Like if I were thinking of one of the differences that I've at least yeah. noticed between the elementary school and, and Hopkins in that student involvement in creating yeah. um, the, the handbook for students and kind of trying to, again, instill a sense of responsibility in the students in enforcing that. That's an excellent point, and everyone knows how much I love reading and revising handbooks, so I'm all about this idea of <laughs> getting this right on board. They're, they're, they will have a loud voice. No, that's a really good point. That, that's, that could very well be what they're referring to. And it'd be interesting to ask, I may ask the student council, uh, Ms. Conklin, to perhaps ask some of the students this was only fifth graders, but to ask right. them to kind of <coughs> survey that group and say, how would you like to be more involved in decision making at the school? Right. If you were involved, what would that look like? <coughs> and God willing, they say we want to read the handbooks. They would. <laughs> <laughs> they would. Yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, training active bystanders. So you can tell this is the, the theme is school climate and culture. 
I provided for you an overview, you see this overview in two places, here and in the overview of the social justice and equity work underway in the district. So what it is, and it's something that is, we get help from the district attorney's office and from Quab and Mediation. It's a very specific curriculum that we have not designed or written, and students are trained in what it means to intervene when they see something happening, even if it's not happening to them, that they're an active bystander and they don't just kind of walk away from a situation where they think, oh, that, that just doesn't sound right or feel right. Anecdotally, so I'm really excited about um, the seventh and eighth grade, all of the students getting active bystander training coming up. And um, I will say anecdotally that just recently we had uh, a few students self-report on something that was happening on campus where, and, and <coughs> talking about themselves and, and saying, you know, this doesn't, it feels like we may be going astray here in terms of what's acceptable humor, and we probably want to look at that. So it does feel like it's it's certainly working and having a positive impact. Before this training, you you volunteered to take the training before. Students <coughs> always, um, it, 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 essentially, any student could could opt out. We've never had a student, you know, say they students previously at the high school it was all high school. Okay. We didn't have it at the middle school, right. and the high schoolers did volunteer and last year we had about 48 I want to say students in 9 through 12 around 48 maybe slightly over 50 so with the graduating not every single senior had gone through the training but a big chunk of them had so um, now we're, we're making it available for all middle schoolers and the students take as you probably picked up when the students hi Meryl, when the hi. students have uh, come before you and talked about some of the work that they're doing they have a really deep interest in social justice, so I'm, I'm not surprised that the students are eager to get this kind of training <coughs> and know what to do to make school safer and more respectful for That's each right. other. Thank you, Ruth. Hi, sorry I'm late. No, no, Traffic coming okay. back from New York City. Yeah. Thank you for no, being here. Glad to have you here. We're on presentations and discussion items, and uh, I think the Gender Equity Task Force update is next. Yes, so next month, the students wanted to come to visit you tonight, but next month you can expect Ms. Camuso and I think a couple of students from the Gender Equity Task Force. Also when they come before you next month, our school committee is scheduled for January 22nd, so that will be the Monday after the alumni game where they will be un, um, making public their social norms campaign at that game. <coughs> you saw some of the quotes and the, uh, I've talked to you about the photos and that will also be on Instagram. So um, what they're doing right now, they're uh, looking for, they're really planning for that January 20th event. And I really want to encourage people in the community to attend the games that day, this big alumni event. Um, they have decided to identify um, an initiative in the Center for Women and Community at UMass that they'd like to support. So they're doing some fundraising with them. And they're looking at bringing one of their programs to Hopkins Academy, <coughs> most likely a program called Safe Dates. Uh, as I said, the Rec Recognize Sexism uh, campaign will be unveiled on the 20th. Um, HA Student Council and the Gender Equity Task Force are working on a policy around social media. So after our conversation at our last school committee, and I said, that's it. You guys, the school committee has your back, guys. <laughs> you are, Instagram is, is you know, uh, They have a rough draft of some ideas. Uh, I already sent those to the school committee's attorney. He made some slight revisions. The advisors will be meeting with the students, and then, as we've done in the past, the students would then make additional suggestions and bring that before policy subcommittee and ultimately before the school committee. So there are some policies around the monitoring of these Instagram or social media accounts mm -hmm. that they're going to use to get the word out. Um, and uh, I think they will be participating in, um, oh, eight gender equity <coughs> students went to the women's conference. They were really excited at that out, about that out in Boston. Meryl Streep was a keynote speaker and they had a wonderful, wonderful time. And they're looking at bringing something <coughs> called Project Voice to Hadley. Um, and looking to schedule a panel and a series of formal discussions about gender equity issues for the entire community. Yeah, they're on fire. They are really doing That's a great, great job. <coughs> yeah. 
So you said April's going to talk with us next week? Yep. That'll be right after that event. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, your student council reports are in your school committee packet. Uh, they're working hard on that buddy bench. I told you a little about that last month. I'm excited that they're going to have that. So the buddy bench is that special bench where students can sit to show they need a friend to play with at recess. And then other students are taught to invite a student on the bench to play. So <coughs> explicit teaching that we do. And they're looking at uh, their filling out a grant application to get funding for that bench. And this is also part of their social justice work at Hadley Elementary School. And you can see Hopkins Academy Student Council, they're fundraising for their campaign for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. They are organizing a speaker and a presentation for the student body on suicide awareness in April. They are doing a career fair in partnership with the guidance office for all students in March and they are really looking at creating a more green community and doing more school-wide recycling. Also, I would add that somebody, Attorney Beal from the University of Massachusetts, UMass Amherst, has something called Mass Impact Day, where volunteers, some of you may be familiar with this, they, they look to volunteer out in the community. They get as many UMass students as possible and employees involved with volunteer efforts. He came to meet with me and with Senora Fitzgibbons. He was looking at having Hadley be a site for volunteerism, but we pointed out that Senora runs a service club. Students have already, I, I think I shared with you, are interested in starting a key club at Hopkins <coughs> Academy. They've done their international service trip, so this theme of service is very important to the students. And they said not, we don't just want to be a site, we actually want to be the volunteers. So. Senora and I believe some student representatives will actually be a part of the planning team with UMass for Mass Impact Day in the fall. That's great. Cool. Yeah. And part of that that we're really focused on as well, we talked about this, and this is something that uh, UMass Attorney Beal indicated that it wasn't something they had thought of, but he certainly thought it was a good idea. Uh, a CPAC parent said something to me not too long ago that uh, the Special Education Parent Advisory Council, a parent from that group, said something that really stuck with me. She said how important it is that all students, and this is obvious, but easily forgotten, that all students are seen as having something to contribute, as having the capacity to make a difference in the lives of others. That, they are, that for some students, I imagine it must feel like they are <coughs> always looked at as the person in need of help, in need of receiving something, some sort of support, some sort of something. And all of us, I see how alight our students are when they get the chance to give. Um, so Senora and her students right now are making sure that they go out of their way to invite, to actively invite any students with disabilities to participate in the planning as part of the group, in the volunteer effort. So, um, and that is something that UMass said they had not really consciously put on their radar before either. So we're hoping that that theme gets picked up too, that everybody has something to give and everybody can help somebody else. Um, that's student council. And social justice activities in the district. This is something that, uh, just to give you an update, I sent it out to the faculty because the different buildings are doing different kinds of work, right, that's developmentally appropriate for the age group with whom they work. So to try to tie all of this together, so some of the values that inform <coughs> our work and values of civility and courtesy and kindness, um, that we appreciate one another and we recognize each other's attempts to grow and to do better and be better. Um, and that we can disagree and have differences of opinion without being divided, right? That d dissent does not need to be divisive. Um, and so we believe this will make a huge difference, right? If we, if we develop these social skills and interpersonal skills and relational capacity with each other, that we believe that we will realize an inclusive and equitable, kind and socially just learning community. And so some of the things that we're doing, Judy Bohol is <coughs> here of running a book group for faculty at HES and HA. The topics of those books, I participate in that group, it's excellent. Um, most of them have to do with mental health issues and supporting the social and emotional needs of students. Uh, this year we had, from James Levine and Associates, uh, just about every month, there's a couple months we have off, but 
trauma-informed instruction and supporting students who have experienced trauma. That's professional development for all interested teachers. Um, we have various kinds of work going on at HES. <coughs> Most of that is evidence-based curricula that we explicitly teach children. Teaching strategies gold is pre-K. Um, steps to respect, second step, those are um, K through six curricula. PBIS, positive behavior interventions, we looked at that data at the beginning in response to the <coughs> started this year. Um, training active bystanders, that's at HA, you have that information in your packet. Um, the Gay Straight Alliance at HA has advocated since uh, many of you have been on school committee for policy change. For example, the, the graduation ropes, that was the first year, that was a, something that was recommended by that student group. The Diversity Club, they have been, they have another event tomorrow night. I want to encourage people in the community to come. This is a fundraiser. They're fundraising, I think, for, I can't keep track of the fundraisers, I want to say for girls' education around the world. <coughs> this sounds it out. Um, so it'll be uh, a Dinner, they're busy doing some cooking tonight, tomorrow. I really strongly encourage the community to come. Those students have worked so hard to bring in speakers and to raise awareness about what's going on around the world um, for people who are suffering in unjust economic and social conditions throughout the world and the Gender Equity Task Force. Um, we've been doing some work as a faculty and we're looking to do more of that work right now, I'm actively looking for a grant with Bill Deal, the executive director at, at Collaborative for Educational Services with his help, um, because our goal is to have CES train some Hopkins students in something called uh, dialogue facilitation, so whereby two trained <coughs> students would, would facilitate a conversation for a couple of hours with 16 other students and the purpose of that is to talk about, kind of have difficult conversations, but not in any sort of explosive way. So students, for example, might watch two video clips and talk about their reactions and then kind of dig deeper about why they made assumptions about one thing versus another. Um, and, um, and to try to get at, just to, just to examine where there may, where any of us might have implicit biases and how those might manifest themselves and how by raising our awareness <coughs> that we can actually become, we can treat each other better and create a better environment. So we're looking for some grant funds to help us to support that. Actually CES would be the one applying for and getting the grant because we're looking for foundation money which is rarely given to schools but would could be given to CES. And that and our uh, formative assessment data collection because Formative assessment data is something that I bring to you. So that's like your dibbles, Mr. Pfeiffer's favorite, um, <laughs> fast data. So your literacy data, we are uh, about to do what we call our winter benchmarking data. So when I have comparison data for you from fall and winter, then I'll bring that to you in, in literacy and mathematics. And we'll do the literacy data and the measurement of academic progress at Haddon Elementary School. And we should have some math data for you as well from Hopkins Academy. And um, very last thing before we go to the budget uh, is that <coughs> partnering with the Amherst Survival Center. I had a meeting recently with some partners of the Western Mass Food Bank. Occasionally in my weekly emails, you'll see I'll, I'll tell the community about the boost program at Amherst Survival Center. So, so Hadley residents can use the Amherst <coughs> Survival Center. Um, and they, they provide groceries for anybody who has food insecurity. You can get groceries there free of cost, it's one of their services. The Boost program helps families when school is out to provide nutritional meals for children. Um, and so we're talking about how we can um, introduce screenings that are, that are non-invasive voluntary screenings for any degree of food insecurity. It may be something that I send out in an email with the information that if you have ever um, had an experience of, of being hungry or you have ever worried that you may not uh, be able to provide food for your family. There's absolutely no shame in that and uh, with the question, if, if yes to anything, there are resources that will go with the email and, um, and people can go to the Amherst Survival Center even if they live in Hadley and access food resources and get connected with other things that can address issues of food insecurity, which there are a, a 
sad <coughs> and shocking number of folks throughout Massachusetts and in Western Massachusetts for whom this is a reality. So again, there's uh, no shame there, and we're eager to give people resources that might help them. I was just at the Western Mass Food Bank, and they were saying one in four children in the valley mm -hmm. are food insecure. <coughs> yeah. We just uh, were volunteering at the survival center, and they mentioned about like the just the the um, diversity of people that that sh that that go there, like people mm -hmm. that never thought that they would need something like that, mm -hmm. and then they were there for they they rely on them for like months, and then they don't need it anymore, and then like there's just a, a, a wide variety of people more than you would normally think of that that use those services. Mm -hmm. So please, if you're there and you run into Mindy, the executive director. Tell her that you're on the Hadley School Committee. She's yeah. really eager to start working with uh, with us around this, and then hopefully it'll. I spoke with some other superintendents. We'll give it a test run here and try to get all the hiccups out. And Northampton Superintendent Dr. Provost and Dr. Morris and Amherst are very eager to do uh, the same thing. So to to give people the resources they need if they are have food insecurity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now the budget, which Chris gets to give you an overview. What I have in your packet, so you know process-wise, the teachers and principals have been submitting data to Chris. And remember the first pass is always just the question, and actually this stems from last year, the year before, um, Humera, where you said, which is a great question, what do you need to do the work well? You know, just say what you need and say why you need it. So give a rationale and explanation, and let's start there. Let's not start by telling people, this is, this is the allotment. Let's get a sense of what they're looking for. So that's the first thing that we do. And then you can see in this handout, we are also prepared for the reality that <coughs> we may have some difficult decisions to make. So it's a two-part process. One is we do this thing that, that's, this is where I think HES started, um, which is, Let's analyze the work underway. So they look at everything in which we're investing from PBIS or responsive classroom or curriculum materials, what are all the things we're investing in, why did we make that investment, and what data do we have to demonstrate that it's having its intended impact. And then they just ask a quick question. Should we start, stop, continue, why? Pick one of those three. That's, and what that does for us <coughs> is try to figure out if we have, I describe it as activities without purpose or solutions without problems. Are we doing something for which we're like, well, we don't really know why we're doing this, but it's awfully fun. And so we try to, we do that kind of thinking. And then on the other side, simultaneously, which is where Pat Bell started with some of our special education staff, is to do more of, do we have problems without solutions? So they started looking at um, some data that you'll see uh, next month. It's called <coughs> Radar Resource Allocation District Reports that the department collects. It really focuses on special education. And uh, they started looking at that and saying, okay, what did the data tell us? What, what might be happening here? So they do something, they, they, what they're trying to do is generate some hypotheses, right, about what do we see in the data, what do we think it means? So the hypothesis might mean that um, we need different kind of uh, programming. We've seen a steep increase in the number of paraprofessionals that we've hired, e educational support professionals. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but just, what does that speak to? Why do we have that need? Um, what's going on? And so our, our, do, we, do we have adequate programming for students with a range of learning needs and social emotional needs? So they try to generate hypotheses and then they do this root cause analysis. So why do we think that is? Why do we think that is? R just trying to get to the root of why are we seeing this? And there we're looking for problems without solutions. And then coming down to, okay, so of that start, <coughs> stop, continue, um, what, let's, for everything we're going to continue with, what's the action plan? And this is, this is all designed so that the school committee can feel really confident and we can feel really confident when we're talking to the town. Like, these are the activities and resources we're dedicating for this purpose, as a result, we expect these outputs and these outcomes, and these are the assumptions that we're making and the reasoning behind it. Um, and so that's what they're doing. They do their big ask, but then they have this, this is a framework that they'll use to start making some decisions. This is a great framework. And then you can look at sort of all those priorities and then from there decide what, what actually can we fund. Exactly. You can identify gaps and redundancies or two things kind of going to the same and 
And the, the protocols that are referred to are things from um, something called uh, strategy in action, which is literally <coughs> educational researchers from out east. So that's what they're busy doing. And now Chris can talk the numbers. <laughs> so we're not a lot of numbers. Next month there'll be numbers. Right, yeah, we got all the budgets in uh, from everyone, but, but not 100%. We got the elementary school numbers in. Uh, we also received Hopkins, and we received most of the SPED, mm -hmm. but not the out-of-district tuition, uh, transportation. Obviously, we want those updated, you know, before we even really take a look at the budget, because well, I looked at it with a bunch of zeros in those lines, and it really looked great, but <laughs> knowing, of course, that... Uh, yeah, that's highly unlikely. So um, I sent an email. They were supposed to get them to me early this week, so today, tomorrow, um, maybe even Wednesday, um, I will have that. And then that's kind of the first look that we'll take at the budget. Um, and, and really, I can't even offer any kind of a judgment at this point until I get those numbers. You know, I, I could say, oh, it doesn't look so bad. But you, we don't really know until we have those numbers in. So. Um, but really, I mean, we're moving along pretty nicely. It's it's very early in a typical budget building process, and um, you know, I mean, I'm I'm on the school committee where we haven't started yet. So you know, here we're we're already up to this point. And I I do another district that we haven't started yet either. So um, you know, a little overachieving. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, it's it's definitely nice to be at this point at this at this point in time. Um, so yeah, as um, as Ann said, we'll certainly have more next month to tell you. But it's it's looking good, and, and certainly in terms of getting it done, you know, early, uh, getting some information to the town because they were looking for numbers. Again, you know, with the heads up that it's early, you know. So I mean, a million things can change. As we know, we approve a budget in say April, and by the time July comes around, things have already changed. So. You know, when, you, when you're doing a budget in December, what that does is it just invites even more changes to be made. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we'll keep uh, applying those as they happen. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I feel, you know, pretty good right now, certainly, about getting some kind of numbers to you, at least uh, in January. And um, we'll go from there. Okay. Great. I also have... I think you... Personnel report. The personnel report. Yeah, that's okay. It's it's very <coughs> it's in your packet. We have a couple of vacancies for yeah. uh, support personnel. And that's it. Okay. okay. Um, mm -hmm. Any public comments? There's no public. <laughs> how how crude would it be if somebody just answered? It's just a body voice. <laughs> All right. Now, now business yes. manager report. Okay, now it is so time for you to point out numbers. Yeah, I could the start. Glaring the difference. Please do. <laughs> See that lunch in camera. Which, I, I have to tell you guys, well, first of all, I didn't realize, I, because I created a separate one last month. I gave one to Ann with the, it's all her fault um, yeah. for the lunch yes. account. Yes, she shared that with and, us. And, yes, and, I and then I that. printed one out for you hiding those rows. Um, <laughs> and apparently she read it anyway. So yes, I read when I went to prepare this report last week, I ran first the athletic account. And I said, okay, you know, we're still positive. Then I ran the lunch account, and I'm like, oh, my God. What's going on here? It's worse than last month. And yes. So, <laughs> so I break out into a cold sweat, and I can't give them that after what she shared with them, my comments. So I uh, emailed the town account, and I said, please, can you post the revenues for November? Because they weren't done yet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that was um, the reason that it was actually looking worse than last month. And he said, oh, I'll have them for you by the end of the week. So Monday morning to this morning, I come in, run the reports right away. Ah, they're not in yet. So I emailed him again. I'm like, please, please, I have to report this tonight, and I cannot report worse information than Ann gave last month. You don't understand the psychotic yeah. competition I have right. So they posted them, and as you can see, while well, it's still in the negative, but only by $500, and we are still owed the September reimbursement from the state, which is, that's, you know, around $7,000. So it's kind of an odd thing. We did get an email from them saying we understand that no districts received their September reimbursement. Uh, funding ran out, and we are looking to get it replaced, and, and we expect to. Um, it just, it's kind of a strange thing, quite honestly. I've never seen that before. I mean, that stuff just comes in pretty much like clockwork. So, you know, what we're looking, if, if you really want to look at the account, you'd say, okay, well, if we add the 7000 to it, we're looking at a positive 
$6,500 balance. That's certainly better than, than uh, you know, how it's looked this month and last month. Um, school choice, as you can see, I'm waiting for the December adjustment to see how we uh, fare with that. Uh, I just checked a few minutes ago before the meeting started. It was not up yet. Um, but what they typically do is they update the school choice amount that we receive in December and going forward we see, you know, I mean, typically there's some kind of a change, either plus or minus. Uh, that's what happened last year where I think we were getting about $46,000 up to December, then it dropped to twenty-three. Mm -hmm. So if they had this, I was actually going to put some kind of a projection on here, but it's, it hasn't been released yet. So uh, as it stands now, <coughs> we've got $954,000. Um, I believe the budget called for us to use about a half a million. So, you know, we're looking at 454000 as it stands right now, plus whatever we receive until the end of the year. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, are there any questions on the revolvings? Okay. Um, we can move on to the regular expense report. Um, not really much here. Uh, a couple of items that come out of this, actually. One of them is uh, the SPED numbers that are higher than projected. Um, last month, I mentioned that they were higher than projections, but said, well, you know, a lot of that will be brought down because I will transfer expenses to grants mm -hmm. and to circuit breaker. And I did that. I didn't really want to do it all at once because the grants like to reimburse you on a kind of month by month basis over the course of a year. So I really wouldn't want to say to the SPED grant, you know, hello, I've already spent the $170,000, please reimburse me in month three of the school year. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just moved about $50,000 and I'll do that over the next couple of months. And it just spreads that out a little bit. They like to see that a little bit more. Um, but actually, Ann and I took a look at the SPED costs in general, uh, just to see where we stood with that. And there's just some information we wanted to share with you. One is that the tuition, as it stands now, is looking to be about $144,000 above where we budgeted. So, um, and in addition to that, we have the, uh, the number of ESPs that we have in the district had to be increased. <coughs> Excuse me. We're about $60,000 short on that. So we're looking at a roughly $200,000 shortfall in the SPED budget. Some um, yeah, we're going to talk about circuit breaker. And, yes, yeah. uh, some of that. Where that is, is that on? It's not. It's not in there actually. Okay. Um, we don't have all the numbers yet. We're waiting. Pat's going to get us information on circuit breaker uh, relief that we might get from these students. Okay. We are also <coughs> we have some school choice in students who um, are special ed students. What happens is we get reimbursed from those students through the school choice SPED um, allocation at the end of the school year. So in June, we get that. What we're doing is we're paying them out of the regular budget right now, any expenses. So what happens is, again, that looks higher, and then we get that amount in June um, you know, to offset those costs. So um, I know, for example, we have one from Belchertown. Um, <coughs> again, we tried to just say, all right, can you just pay us? And no, we can't. We have to do it through school choice. OK. so. You know, depending on how the finances go, we may or may not look to pull some just additional funding out of school choice, which is that SPED amount that we did get reimbursed for, to cover those costs. Um, again, it's early in the process to know that yet. We'll certainly know more. But uh, what we just wanted to do was bring it to your attention that these costs are above, you know, what we budgeted for. There are some other things that can offset it. Quite honestly, <coughs> the. Uh, vocational tuition at this point in time is about, we just had another student move in, but I would say roughly $60,000 below budget. So well, that's good news. We can certainly slide that money right over and, and offset some of this deficit. So, you know, there's a lot of movement, but again, you know, we certainly want to be open and, and just let you know when certain items are over budget. But this is really so, um, again, we'll know more when Pat gets that information over the next couple of weeks. It'll be a new January meeting packets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other than those items, though, again, you know. So you said that was tuition, and what was the other piece of it? Um, Educational support professionals. That's right. That's right. And so, if, if for example, a school a student who is with us in the school choice program 
who is a student receiving special education services, and one of those services includes a one-to-one, -one, mm -hmm. you build that for all expenses. So that comes in school choice special ed included. So that's why we're going to go through and see, of all these costs, how many students are with us through the school choice program, and we're reimbursed for those costs. And there's also extraordinary relief, which I can't remember the, the formula for it, but if our costs exceed the actual <coughs> cost by a certain factor, then you get something called extraordinary relief under Circuit Breaker. We got it last year. So you get it from the state, you don't get it from the sending district. You get it from the state. Circuit Breaker, Circuit Breaker would apply to students who, for whom Hadley is fiscally responsible. School choice increment applies to students for whom another town is fiscally responsible and they send the money to us through school choice. Yeah, if we can come back to that next month, that would be good to sure. stay on top of. I know mm -hmm. every time we go to um, Triboard, you know, those are the kinds of things that they ask about is what is potentially mm -hmm. on the horizon that mm -hmm. was unanticipated. Yep. Mm -hmm. So and it might be good to have like a breakdown of that kind of, of that kind <coughs> of on this, um, as opposed to trying to look at the sped look the sped lines and try mm -hmm. to like, do the math. With sure. That. So sure. that's yep. Yeah. With a list of variables, mm -hmm. these are the things that could go out of whack. So we can talk about a way to track the things that, um, the unexpected. Mm -hmm. Does we also have two others? We have um, uh, uh, great and very happy that the students are still with us, but we have a couple of students who have uh, recently and, uh, qualified for transportation under mckinney Vidto, homeless transportation. So that means that they are transported from wherever they are currently residing to Hopkins County, should they choose to do that, or have the elementary school, their school, whatever school they're in, and um, the district is required to provide that transportation. So that's always something that is unexpected. It's unexpected for everybody. Are, are these Hadley residents? So when a child is homeless, oh, right. then they're but their their <coughs> their school of origin, right. McKinney Vento says that the displacement stops at right. losing one's home, yeah. and you maintain your membership in your school. Okay. Can I ask why the school committee budget is so high? Well, is it the nice plaques. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where Which was line that? item is that, Paul? It's page six. Is that for uh, conferences? I was we don't use. Was yeah. it's page six. I think pretty much every year. Um, your school committee. Well, actually, your this expense. shows oh. they expensed some of that. Okay, well, yeah, so your MASC, uh, MASC fees were higher than budgeted. Uh, so that was the that was, uh, majority, if not, I think that was all of it, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, worth the expense. Oh, yeah, sure. definitely. <coughs> okay. Uh, next, we have the grant report. Again, so if you look at the 240 grant and the circuit breaker money, you can see that it's increased substantially from where we had last month. That is basically the expenses that I've moved into those two categories. And again, I'll move some additional money uh, this month and then next month as well. That'll uh, certainly help the local budget out and, uh, you know, as I said, spread the expenses around a little bit in the grant. So that, that's, uh, you know, we like to keep the grant people happy as well, um, you know, when we request the money. Um, everything else, as you can see, uh, is being spent right on target. Um, the Title IIA, we've already spent the entire amount. <coughs> uh, that was for, uh, we had uh, part of a teacher salary and part of a psychologist sal salary. Those are um, coming out of that grant, so we used all that. Now we're, we've switched it over to Title I, and we are utilizing those funds for the same two pur purposes. Um, and that's, that's basically it with the grants. <coughs> You mentioned, I think, last month or maybe it was two months ago, some grants that we uh, didn't think we would hear. Two seventy-four, from. we won't be getting. Two ninety-eight, uh, pretty much nobody will be getting those. Yeah. Okay. Um, Three ninety-one <coughs> was decreased this year. They expect it will decrease again next year. Okay. We're a little concerned that uh, there's murmuring that two ninety 
um, may also end up on the chopping block, that, that would be a problem for us in FY19. That funds, uh, the majority of that funds a nurse salary. So, and that's a grant that the state and I think it's just a state grant. It's not a federal grant. It is a state grant. Yeah, it's a state grant. It's looking to be cut. Any talk of um, state monies that will replace, create new opportunities? Any talk of state monies to replace any of those grants? Well, not one for one, but anything. Yeah. Um, Things that yeah. aren't on the list that we right. might actively yeah. see. Wholly new right. opportunities. Yeah. Um, no, if anything, the funding is uh, less <laughs> and less. There's just less available in terms of competitive and discretionary grants. Which of these are federally backed? The ones usually where you see the word title, that's your big, so IDEA right. is federal. Uh, <coughs> title, IDEA, circuit breaker, they pass through the state, but um, that's it, right? For all federal? The, yeah, all the titles, um, circuit, and the IDEA. Yes, that is correct. Do we worry that under this administration that those might be susceptible to going away, or are they secure because they're law and grandfather? Well, Circuit Breaker and IDEA, um, I, I would be really surprised that the advocacy for special education is pretty strong and well organized. Mm -hmm. I would be shocked. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens, and we'll see what happens in terms of even, even Governor Baker's little uh, We'll have to see what happens in terms of uh, the, the new tax plan and the impact that that will have <coughs> on various states in terms of um, in terms of local services and, and local revenues. Well, I think when we're listing out like the 2019 budget and the risks mm -hmm. that we have kind of earmarked as the unknowns, including the mm -hmm. tuition and. Mm -hmm. um, the, the grants, whatever mm -hmm. the questionable idea, grants yeah. are that you've got, they should be on sure. the list. Sure. I think you should expect dramatic cuts proposed by the administration in yes. FY19. Exactly. There were dramatic cuts proposed for FY18. The Congress didn't take them, but with the tax bill that gets passed, they're talking about cutting Medicare <coughs> right. and reducing the federal budget overall. So right. And IDEA has actually never been fully funded since it was implemented. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> the uh, cuts in Medicare and Medicaid would have an impact on the town when we build um, for, through Medicaid, that revenue goes. So we do the Medicaid billing, there are services that students receive that are eligible for reimbursement under Medicaid. And uh, those, that, those reimbursements go directly to the town. Um, so that certainly those cuts would have an impact on the town side. They don't come to us. Okay. Anything on, else on the revolving accounts? Have we covered that? <coughs> All right. Capital plan. Oh, capital plan. I'm sorry. So this is on here. Remember, warrant articles are due. If I didn't, you know, I, there was no indication that there was something big in terms of warrant articles. We have a few things that we're working on now. Of course, we'll update folks on the fields too, but. Just a reminder, I sent you some dates and warrant articles are due. If we're going to make any changes or recommendations <coughs> for warrant article, you need to do that at your January meeting because the deadline, I think, is the beginning of February. I think it's about February 9th. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, we just had a, a couple of things <coughs> in the capital plan. Um, the air conditioners, for example, are are on there, but they're not really showing up in any particular year at this point in time. Um, you know, what it looks like is that they would actually be in the FY19 <coughs> school year at this point in time. Um, and I can go into details on the, uh, the bid process after we finish this, but that's, that's really, I think, where we could probably expect it certainly to be completed. Um, but again, you know, we're kind of looking for your feedback on that as to where you would like it placed. Um, you know, so Chris, I'm understand that. So we have four hundred thousand dollars, right? But the previous bid came in a little over five, right? We have um, we got yes, that's right. We got mm -hmm. four. We have three eighty five of it left. <coughs> we used fifteen of it for the design, uh, the specs, and, and all of that. So and we were going to rebid it. We will rebid it in January. I already reached out to the vendor that we used last time. Uh, what we're going to do this time is we're going to ask for two bids. Well, 
I guess kind of two bids. We're going to ask for a bid on the whole job, and then we're going to ask for a bid on each individual wing of the school, uh, because what we were going to do, had we had enough money, we would have started the year with the younger children's wing. Um, that had the students that were most affected by the warmer temperatures, and so we would have done that one first. If we get bid prices by, you know, per wing, if nothing else, we should be able to get two of them done, and at least it's, it's a good head start. I mean, there's no point in, in you know, keep waiting and waiting, you know, and you know, trying to get more money. We can at least get something done in the meantime. And, you know, in an ideal condition, we'd get, a, we'd, you know, we'd get a low enough bid that we could actually do this, um, the whole project. But <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, that was basically, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, the question that we had there. Um, yeah. We had another one too. And we were meeting with public safety on Wednesday, right? Wednesday, Wednesday yes. And uh, I mentioned to you before that public safety did some site visits to both HES and HA, so they'll have some recommendations. Uh, you may see some of that in a generic way. We will have executive sessions scheduled in January at 5.30. Uh, Chief Mason, probably Chief spank -Nable would come and speak to you guys about what they're recommending being put on the Catholic plan. And then the girls' locker room remodel, knowing that that was a dated estimate, mm -hmm. have we, I mean, is there a way to get a more current estimate without, you know, shelling out money for a survey and... <laughs> we actually um, had the building inspector check the plans, mm -hmm. and the good news is that they were still all fine. You know, there were no code changes that made them obsolete, so okay. that, that's definitely a good, um, a good idea. <coughs> the question is, are those plans what still wanted to be done, I guess? You know, that's, that's the real question. These plans were done, I think it says on here, I think it was like 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> That was eight years ago. Right. Is that still what you want, or, or is there something different? So, again, that's kind of a decision that I guess would need to be made before we even looked any further. So how do we start that conversation? Because, I mean, to your point, I don't think any of us were involved in that, and I don't know that any of the current administration was involved in those plans. I think there was no one mm -hmm. here right. at that point. So it seems yeah. odd to enact something that may not have been vetted through at least, you know, the athletic director and mm -hmm. Mr. Beck, et cetera, so, and, and others involved in athletics. I mean, but I guess I don't know what, what we, the process is to kind of... Yeah, that's, it's a tough thing. <laughs> um, I suppose what we could do is we could try to get, I mean, it's a big roll of blueprints, you know, so we, we really wouldn't need all of it, but certainly some kind of a summary packet put together, if we could get them scanned and shrunken down to, you know, maybe even a legal size paper, because you hate to shrink it so much that you can't read it. Um, so at least we get an idea of what's being done, because it's, again, at this point in time, there's no one that can just say, oh yeah, when we were here, we asked them to do this, this, and this. There's no one, so we don't really know. <coughs> but we can, um, you know, certainly try to do that. I think that would be a good first step in determining that you know, wow, yes, we really like that, or, geez, I don't know, some of those things I don't like, you know, right. and I think that's, that's certainly something we could try to do. I'm, yeah. I'm not an expert at scanning and shrinking blueprints, so I, I'm a, I, I assume they certainly can be scanned, it's just a question of how, how much they can shrink down, but then we could certainly write up some kind of a summary. So what I, that's what saying. I was wondering, is if there's any kind of summary documentation that came with it when that initial... Um, Set of blueprints. I like don't believe there is, no. Together. I just saw a whole lot of drawings in there. Yeah. But, but yeah, realistically, we, obviously, right, we're not, this is something we need to do, or we want to do, it's just not uh, in the books to have it done, obviously, in FY18. So I don't know if we want to spend the time to revise this capital plan. We've got two big projects that we have initial funding <coughs> for, most funding for the, the air conditioners in the fields that we mm -hmm. want to get done. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to show a significant project on those projects before we look to other funding. I agree. <coughs> Opposed to it? 
but it's something that, uh, from an equity standpoint, it, it needs to be a priority as soon as we can do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, to yeah. Heather's point, it's sort of, do we want to at least take some time to dust off what it is we want to refresh that and see if it's, if those um, drawings are still what we want. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm worried about the currency of them. Yeah. I mean, back then, they were probably relevant. Are they still relevant? I don't know. Are they relevant in conjunction with what's being done <coughs> outside, you know, and what's happened inside since then? Right. But I, to your point, I think last time we talked about it, we wanted to keep it on here because we do want an investment, at least in getting the girls' locker room remodeled. I think um, somebody had mentioned that the boys' locker room had been remodeled mm -hmm. since the beginning of the building construction, and that the girls had not. Right. So, so what would be the, the quickest and easiest way, short of getting new plans made, just to see if it was, they were so still relevant? Chris, you were saying that we could see what we can do in terms of getting the documents down to something that's manageable for the entire committee to take a glance at? Sure. Or are you thinking it makes sense for a smaller representative group to take a look at that? Well, I mean, at least like a list of specs and a synopsis of what it was. Okay. Um, because I yeah, I think if have any idea of what, mm -hmm. that, what, what that is. I don't think we need to look at all the, like each mm -hmm. individual print, but mm -hmm. right. I mean, things changed since 2009. Right. So. Mm -hmm. But I would look for somebody with athletics who right. like right. insight into the building and the needs. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't know that in looking at this list. I'd be like, right. okay, are these like mm -hmm. essentials or are these right. nice to have? Mm -hmm. I'd want Sudnick to look at it, yeah. Mish and their teams basically. Yeah. Yeah. The folks who they work most closely with to see what was consistent and what was out of water. <coughs> yeah, we could certainly Mish schedule we have. Yeah. Uh, after yeah. school with the three of us say to go in sure. with these blueprints and say, Okay, so we're looking at this, okay, that's going to change, you know. Okay. Um, I think that would be a great idea, sure. Okay. All right, and then we can put that on there. I have an email agenda. started to Jeff right now. I will add Eric. Great. Okay. Great, thank you. I also have one other item, I apologize. I, I got a phone call today from Eric. He's looking to declare some old uniforms as surplus. Um, it just occurred to me, oh my God, I forgot to print this out, but if you'd like, I can read what he has. Yep. <clears throat> um, 35 warm-up tops, 33 warm-up pants, 38 white home soccer shirts, 36 white home soccer shorts. Somehow, apparently, some of the shorts disappeared along the way. <laughs> um, 18 basketball shooting shirts and 22 golf rain jackets. He's looking to declare those as surplus, um, and, and he just said to give them away, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so the school committee is the first step on that, and then we also have to offer them to the town. Um, I can't see what they would do with them either, and then from there he can, um, you know, dispose of them any way he'd like, I guess. I'm okay question. with that. I'm just curious to whom they would be offered. Uh, what he's, put them out there. Well, yeah, yeah, he said for kids students. Remember, we talked about all of us wearing them. That mm -hmm. may still be. Jersey. Yeah. 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 School yeah. committee. Yeah. School committee. Yeah. Yeah. Parents. Yeah. 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 Parents of some of those children. I don't think. No. I think you do need a motion and a second to declare oh. surplus. Is there a motion? Motion to the support the idea of surplus athletic wear. Okay. <laughs> Is there a second? A little second because it was easier to say than. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 I wonder if any of those will be showing up in our house. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> yeah. So I can close that. Perfect. Okay. Or, you know, speaking of the survival center, and mm -hmm. the places that take donations. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Uh, field updates on bid specs. Okay. So, uh, let's see. I have contacted three vendors just to determine if we need to go out to bid on the bid specs mm -hmm. and the design work and all of that. Um, I got back two prices. I'm hoping to get back a third. Uh, he asked for some additional information. I sent that off today. And uh, so I'm hoping we can get a price from uh, this last vendor. The two prices I received, uh, there was a substantial difference between the two of them. Um, so I'm expecting the third to come somewhere in the middle. Um, but So let me understand exactly this is. This is taking the initial rough design that Brookshire Design did. Mm -hmm. And doing specific specifications. Mm -hmm. So yeah. somebody can actually bid the job. So somebody couldn't right. bid the job Off based on what is. we have. Um, right. They they 
right. you know, in your job. They, yeah. There's a degree of specificity that's required to right. protect the school, the town, and sure. so the person who's getting into it knows exactly what we want and bids it appropriately in terms of cost. I mean, again, you know, it's, it's it, by law we have to do this, but that would prevent somebody from, say, putting on three inches of topsoil on the fields when we'd really prefer they put ten or something right. like that, you know. So certainly these designers know better than I would how much, you know, of that you'd like. If you'd like, you know, say, gravel underneath it or something, you know. Yeah. Um, even with the irrigation system, they want, you know, a certain kind of sprinkler head. And, you know, there's, I'm sure, many different kinds. Somebody to get a lower bid might use the cheapest one. Others, you know, other might be using uh, a higher quality one. So <coughs> if we get all of that down, you know, we, we certainly come out with everybody bidding on the same exact, um, you know, set of products. Um, and so we were looking for the full designs, you know, that would include the, you know, the irrigation system, again, the whole, the whole thing. Um, so, you know, we looked at pictures, basically overhead views, and it says, oh, well, we want the softball field here, the baseball field here. Um, these designs would also have, you know, just like a building, they would show, this is where the irrigation lines go, et cetera. You know, so we'd certainly have all of that uh, prepared for us. Um, the other thing we would have them do is to draw up those bid spec specs for us and also to attend any kind of <coughs> pre-bid opening meetings. We usually have a walkthrough. People take a look at the land. Um, they ask questions. And again, it's certainly better to have someone more knowledgeable. I mean, I, I planted my lawn, but I have not built an athletic field. You know, So, I mean, there are things that you really just want somebody who knows what they're doing um, to handle. Uh, we look for them to do that and then to kind of be our partner throughout the construction process, to stop in, um, check on, you know, how things are going, making sure that the specs are actually being adhered to. Um, there might be conservation commission questions, you know, where we're essentially moving earth and, and, you know, with that there's always some kind of question that comes up. Uh, we'd look for somebody to help represent us with that particular item. So. You know, there's a lot to do, and, and, you know, we certainly want to make sure that we pick the right partner in that process. Uh, so the nice thing is that there are a number of local, or I guess semi-local, you know, in the Hamptons or, or right in this area that, um, that do this. So, you know, I didn't have to reach out to, you know, companies, say, on the eastern part of the state or something like that. So that's, that's a good thing. It's gonna, when I mentioned Hopkins, they all knew where it was. Oh, right in the back, yes. So, you know, that's... It's a plus right there just to have them at least know what they're looking at. Um, and again, as soon as I get that information, you know, we can, we can move forward from there. But I explained to them what we're looking to achieve, when we're looking to start, which would be really right after the end of the athletic season in June. Um, and nobody seemed to have any kind of an issue with that actually happening. So, <coughs> um, you know, next month again, I guess I'll have more information for you Thanks, as far as that goes. Now, would this design be just for phase one, or would they be designing phase one and phase two? Phase one. <coughs> what we don't want to do... Oh, boy, I could use a drink of water, too. So <coughs> exactly where I want that. What we don't want to do is to run into an issue like we did with the locker room. <coughs> Makes sense. Where we have, you know, plans drawn up, and then umpteen years later, we're looking at it. You know, it just doesn't make sense. So. In phase two, <coughs> I, I, I could see how phase two could be impacted by phase one. But something happens yeah. during phase one yeah. that it you know, mm -hmm. changes phase two. So yeah. we did that talk about sense. that, and so we specifically decided, given that things just take time in towns and they're subject, and funding is subject to appropriation, it seemed like not a good use of money to have bid specs drawn up for phase two and three right now. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. All right. Okay. Was there anything we needed to no. motion on that, though? That was more just informational. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, school committee reports and discussions, so negotiations. Tara? So we started negotiations today mm -hmm. for UMT in our first meeting, and we're scheduled for another meeting at the beginning of the new year. Which mm -hmm. union is that again? ESP. Yep. Great. And A and C are um, done. Settled and signed. Yeah. Yes. Great. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. and what does B mean? <coughs> we don't have a B. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So that's done. Check. Never. <laughs> um, 
The policy. school committee will negotiate for their raise. You're the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fast. Guys want to Whatever you guys? percent you want. <laughs> really? No. Sure. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, policy. So we'll have a yeah. meeting, yeah, next year at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, finance and tri board. I don't have any updates since we last met. Okay. Okay. And there is an all boards meeting. I sent you that date. I can't remember mm -hmm. when it is. One nine. Does that sound right to people? But there's an all boards meeting. So that would be. Yes. That's a yeah, and that is where it's kind of a. It's not the really the public information session for the public, but it's that discussion of what are people looking for? What are the priorities? The town says these are our priorities for funding this year. And one nine. Yes. One nine. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Um, collaborative. Yes, so uh, in your email inbox is a fiscal year 2017 annual report from Collaborative. Um, you can also note that they had um, an audit and clean bill of health uh, financially. Um, there, uh, so I didn't, I wasn't able to go to the November meeting, but the previous meeting they um, were involved quite a bit in um, uh, discussions around uh, space and um, because they've substantially outgrown their space and are looking at various other, various opportunities around that. Um, but um, that's the update. There's lots to see in, in, in your email inbox in terms of the range of different support services they provide, but they're doing great work. Yeah. Great. Thanks for sending that. Okay, action items. We did some of these. We didn't do others. Uh, participation in school choice for 1819? Yes. Yeah, so what I would like from you now, in, in a couple of months, probably around February, you'll vote slot. You know, I give you the actual seats. Yep. But um, the good news is we had last week, last time I heard, we were on our eighth excited school choice visit for next <coughs> year at Hopkins. So Mr. Beck would very much like to be able to tell the families, which he can't until the school committee says we are going to participate in school choice. So I just need no seats, just that we plan on participating. As you know, we never exceed our seats at Hopkins. We have plenty of room. So uh, Brian could then contact all the families and say, yes, we're, we're open for business for next year. I don't, I don't see an argument why we wouldn't. No, we should definitely help families plan and help ourselves plan for them, their right. arrival. It seems like every year, I mean, again, we're trying to maintain a consistency in filling the seats that mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. And we do see uh, variation from grade to grade, as you've shown us every mm -hmm. year. And it seems like we're bringing in um, mm -hmm. and are trying to continue to bring in more students to come here. Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, then is there a motion to participate? Motion to participate is school choice. For the 18, 19 year? Yes. And then all in favor? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, the next three things are part of the consent agenda. Correct? I split. You, I, I oh, apologize. I split yeah. it out again because I was get. I personally was getting a little confused around what you can, since you since I, B I do not, you don't participate in. Right. So the I'm consent was warrants. throwing me off. So yep. I just separated. So if so, approval of, of accounts payable. This is the one that Heather abstains from because she works for one of the vendors. Mm -hmm. However, once that is passed, Heather can participate in D because her vote no longer matters. I mean, it does matter. We care about you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, as Fred told me to do it that way. And the consent was throwing me off, so I just separated it Okay, that's yeah. fine. So B, um, if somebody would like to motion and second that, uh, I can't participate in the vote. I'll abstain from AP Warrens. Counts. I move to approve the AP Warrens submitted December 2017. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We want to abstain. Okay, uh, we've got the November 30th minutes just from uh, a mere couple weeks ago. We met here. Thank you for speaking sure. <laughs> on those topics. Any questions on that? No. Motion to accept the minutes from November 30th, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, approval of warrants, uh, payroll warrants mm -hmm. submitted uh, over the last December 17th since our last meeting. <coughs> A motion to approve? 
Motion to approve the warrant submitted in December 2017. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and we have another donation to food services. Yes, we had a um, Hadley citizen that offered to make a donation to pay for, um, I think it was the, the deficit accounts of reduced lunch students, uh, and any kind of donation is just required to get school committee approval. Uh, the person who made the donation prefers that their name not be mentioned, but... Um, Nevertheless, it, you know, as with any donation, it just needs your approval and acceptance. It's very generous. Of somebody very generous. Yeah, very generous. Thank you. So, very Chris, can you give us a sense of what that deficit is? Um, the dollar amount that was donated, I believe there were two donations. One was $100, and I believe the other one was $500. Um, so and that covers the, the debt of reduced lunch? for several students for a reduced lunch? It does, and um, I have an email from Diane Zach after that donation um, to pay the outstanding lunch money of free and reduced students. Here is the breakdown of lunch debts. Hopkins right now is at $1,448, and Hadley Elementary is at 460 so there's still you know, a sizable amount, $1,908 um, that has, that's in deficit accounts right now, so. That's after the $600 <coughs> donation. That's after that, right. And again, I mean, this, this is just something that happens every year, mm -hmm. and it's certainly not a Hadley-only item. Um, I, I actually had another district ask me, geez, what do you do in other districts for this because I'm having such a problem, and I spoke mm -hmm. with Diane, uh, she shared the letter that goes out to mm -hmm. the parents of students mm -hmm. with deficit accounts, and, and so I shared it with, you know, with this food services supervisor in another district. So, mm -hmm. it, it's it's something that happens everywhere. So, <coughs> if somebody wanted to make a donation, who would they contact? I would say they would probably contact Diane Zach since she's in you know both buildings. Um, but I think you know whoever they contacted, whether it be the superintendent's office mm -hmm. or even a building principal, whoever got that call would certainly direct them, you know, right to Diane Zach. Well, it's <coughs> much, much appreciated. It is. And uh, is there a motion to accept this donation? I move to accept that uh, very generous donation. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank you very much to whomever uh, that is. We really appreciate it. And I'm sure the families and the students do as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Evaluation of meeting. It took a little longer than you had thought. Yeah. Like, sorry. That's all. That was Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Successful. Okay, we'll meet January 22nd. Any uh, concerns with that date? Folks want to look at their calendars real quick. No concerns, but uh, I will be, be traveling that day. I should be here, as far as I can tell. The 22nd? The 22nd. All right, all right, then uh, let's see, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.